warm, warm round of applause and welcome to the stage, Alice Reeves. <laughs> the uniform. I am a bisexual. It's very easy to spot us. We either look like we're presenting a CBeebies show or fronting an emo rock band. Or we swing both ways. I grew up in a small Surrey town and I moved to Brighton when I was 18. It took me longer than most people to really assimilate into the culture though. It was 12 years before I became both a bisexual and a vegan. Um, <laughs> I don't know which way around it happened though, because that is the age old bisexual vegan question. What came first, dating the chicks or ditching the eggs? <laughs> That's my dad joke for the night. Uh, as young women, we worry so much about turning into our mums when we grow up, but for queer women, the real danger is turning into our dads. <laughs> I'm in my mid-30s now and I cannot be asked for shaving. Uh, I own cargo shorts and hiking sandals. And when I got a power drill for Christmas, I was genuinely thrilled. <laughs> I've been embracing it though. I've really been embracing my queerness. It took me a long time to feel confident enough to do that. Mainly because I just really wanted to be one of those Instagram girls, you know? skinny, tanned, wearing an oversized sweater over bare legs, hair swept back in a messy bun, journaling cross-legged on a bean bag, hashtag blessed. Um, but I just looked, <laughs> but I just looked hashtag depressed, uh, half naked, greasy haired and crying into my therapy homework. So I went the other way. I embraced the dungarees and the comfy shoes and I cut all my hair off. I was a bit worried that men wouldn't fancy me anymore. But you know what? They don't. So I'm with a woman now. She's great. She's a musician because at 35 years old, I'm still actively trying to disappoint my parents. So I think if you ask my dad, I disappointed him a long time ago. Uh, he's a lawyer, and when I was a baby, he used to read me law textbooks, like bedtime stories, trying to get the information to absorb into my subconscious so that I'd become a genius. By the age of three, he had trained me so that every time a grown-up said, Sam, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, a barrister. <laughs> and then by the age of 17, there I was standing up in front of hundreds of people every day, providing a vital service to the business people of Surrey, and I couldn't understand why my dad wasn't prouder of my job at Starbucks. <laughs> so I'm with a woman now, it's great, but I do still have a significant male relationship in my life. I love him so much, he is absolutely gorgeous, I just, I worry sometimes our relationship is quite toxic. It's just, he gets very jealous and possessive. He doesn't really want me to have a life outside of him. When he doesn't get his own way, he destroys my stuff out of pure spite. And when he took a shit on the bed, my girlfriend said the dog cannot sleep with us anymore. <laughs> he's, he's great though, he's a rescue dog. Anyone else got a rescue dog? <laughs> you're, you're like, oh, yeah. Um, but, but they're great, you know, it's, it's been tough, it's had its challenges, but he's taught me a lot. He's taught me about unconditional love, about trust, and he's also taught me that if I don't like the look of someone, I can just go, <laughs> and they fuck off. <laughs> it's great. It's great. He's, he's taught me a lot about responsibility as well. You know, I'm at the age where lots of my friends are having kids, but I've always been a bit too nervous to offer to babysit, because um, I don't really have a clue about kids, you know, d despite looking like this. <laughs> don't really have a clue about children. Um, I don't know about you, but they look like they'd be quite stressful to look after. <laughs> You know, like on a night out when your best mate gets absolutely smashed 
and they start just shouting random shit at strangers like, hey, you, I don't like your face. <laughs> and then at the end of the night, you try and get them to leave the bar and they're like, I don't wanna go home yet. I just wanna have one more, I don't wanna go yet. And then eventually you get them on the train home and they pass out on your lap and dribble all over you. But uh, with my newfound confidence as a dog mum, I offered to babysit my friend's young son last week, and I did really well. Uh, within 30 minutes, I had taught him to fetch, and he <laughs> fetched me my beers from the fridge. That was great. Every time he misbehaved, I said, no, sit. I threw a chocolate bar at him. And then by 8 p.m. he'd eaten half his toys and was fast asleep on the kitchen floor, so I think I nailed that one. <laughs> Thank you.